You know? Oh shit, wait, they're all, they're populated. What the hell? We might get a match going. Yep. I was just about to say, man, we're, we're usually fine about talking to, like, about nothing and filling gaps, but you can only do it for so long. That's true. <laughs> Jesus. Alright, let me change the scoreboard because we now have the player names. There we go. And it seems like the stream is actually going to start, which means we can put on game audio. And we will, we will be listening to Donguitos. It doesn't matter who we listen to because both speak it, Spanish? Is it just... I was gonna say, are both of them... I didn't know if uh, either of them would gonna have no... Uh, okay, let me reload real quick because of... I think that the streams are desync. But right. now they should Probably. be in sync. I'm the only one I can I can understand them. Okay, and now <laughs> you get your um full screen. The full screen might not work for us since we're in uh, application share. Oh, oh, do I have to do screen share? Yeah, it's not like we can hear anything anyways. So might as well just do screen share for us instead. Just switch it over. Um, okay, wait, um, screens, screen one. Okay, now, okay, does it work for you? Yeah, that works. Okay, nice. Okay. Sick. Just in Here we go. Spain versus Latin America. Alright, yeah, we do get a little desync, but it's whatever. Yep. Yeah, nobody is going for double Wumpo, which is a shame. Would have loved to see yep. that here. That beaker, nope. Okay. All right. How many will go for big boy? How many will fail it? Only Don Guitos. Wow. Just dong. I'm surprised. I'm used to seeing pretty much everybody going for it. Yeah. Yeah. Nowadays, you really see a lot of people just go for the big boy mm. simply because it's gotten a lot easier ever since the game was last patched in March. That squish on Dong was mm. massive right there. Wasn't able to make the shortcut. Yeah. Had to turn around completely for it. Now down in seventh place. Got a nice little tandem going on up here in the front though. Mm. Room. Let's go. Turn took down one of the people uh, right before the blue fire pad, but it looks like they probably were able to get the blue fire back and rather than uh, respawning at the bottom. To be fair, that shortcut fail was also just a misuse of Dong, like he should have known that he wouldn't be able to make that shortcut while being squished. So, yeah, for yeah. Sure. yeah, like you need at least also, sacro, right? No, yeah. you need at least yellow, I, I think. Y yeah, you need some fire of some yeah, kind. Yeah, yeah, you need some you kind know, of fire. Squished. But uh, yeah, okay. So uh, for those that haven't paid attention, at the very least, uh, on your scoreboards to the the left, the Spiros are your Latin Americans, and then the crashes are going mm. to be your Spaniards. So yep. we do see that somebody from Latin America is out in front in first place, followed by uh, somebody from uh, the Spaniards. Mm. And then Dong is in third place at the moment. We've also seen Dong taking out some of the um, Ooh, Spanish the players. Player with the mask and that's very important because it is right after they jump down from the blue fire pad so they get a pretty hefty time loss of about 10 seconds 15 seconds yeah I think we, we saw three already yeah we did see dong hit a red potion over the shortcut yeah uh, lost a decent chunk of time i think he only lost like one position for yeah. it though which is nice for him yeah. Rogamezzo oh, nice getting oh, hit off. That of bomb me. that bomb was juiced up for sure. Yeah, for sure. Dong choosing to go kind of wide on that uh the hairpin cut. And we see also Dong holding onto that missile even though he really should get rid of it by now. Because he's just he's behind his own teammate and he gets finally yeah, rid of it, goes. yeah. And he's gonna get a super engine. It's not super necessary on this map, but it's nice. 
I generally see a lot of people holding onto items for way too long because they always think oh uh, maybe I will need that item later on but then that situation may never present itself and at the end you realize oh I held onto that item for, for three laps and I couldn't use it even once. And, yeah, yeah. and I think especially if, in your, if you are in a position like Dong who is behind um, his, his own teammate, his own teammate his dismissal. Yeah, then <laughs> you, you can't really make use of that. And he's Shooting. He's gonna actually grief his teammate at this point. No way, the position. Oh, no, no. oh, the positions are glitched. Oh, okay. Oh wait, is that a crash? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, Never yeah. It, I think that's Lachazu. Oh, okay, Lachazu is glitched on Dong's screen. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so yeah, we've been calling it wrong this whole time. Then, okay. Can someone? Can someone send me a screen of the scores? Uh, oh shit! I yeah sure whatever. Here you go. As long as you know what, uh... I'm just gonna drop it in the commentary one. Yeah, Lach Lachazu was uh, fourth. Okay, yeah, Lachazu was fourth. All right, so strong first shilling for Spain with that yep. uh, first race right there. Yep. yep. But they go one, two, four, and then what the hell? Eight? Yeah. Yeah, one, two, fourth, and eighth. Yeah, definitely good start for them. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good start for Spain because Spain really needs to make something happen. If they can win, they can still qualify for the group stage because they are on the verge of being eliminated. And also, I agree um, that the lineup for Spain is really good. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna move into map two, Cortex Castle. This is uh basically a pick for Dong at the very least. So to be honest, I think get to... from the Latin American team, I don't think we've seen any grave mistakes from the Latin American team, but just a lot of small things because we've seen Don Quito setting that beaker on the shortcut, which shows a lack of awareness because that's one of the most popular spots where you find items because the beakers there are hard to really see because they are often like um, hidden by the crate and stuff and he just ran into that beaker like he didn't even watch out and stuff and you should always whenever you approach that wall <clears throat> you should always um, tell yourself okay there might be a red beaker there so it's just little mistakes like these where you can see okay that that's why Team Latin America lost that race it's just a lot of small mistakes basically yeah. Yeah, we've mentioned before, I mean, obviously, if you don't plan on using that box to recycle an item, then yeah. Yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you have you have a double score on Latin oh, yeah. America. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, how does it always happen? Uh... Yeah, QWERTY was um, seventh. True, yeah, true, true, true. All right, now it's fixed. Yep. Nine points different. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah, and we've also mentioned before talking about the people hanging onto items too too mm -hmm. long. We talked about it in yeah. the last match yeah. with uh, the people in in last place hanging onto items for yeah. too long. Just yeah, tilting. yeah. That's another big thing that we get yeah. to see. That's definitely true. Dong not going for the first item crate here is a very risky play, but if he can keep these tight lines, then it might. Yeah, okay, nope. he wasn't. There it goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the one thing you always need to keep track of because if you decide to not go for the first item crate, um, that means you won't have any protection. You can't defend yourself against anything, and you just basically have to prey on actually being able to run away. Which, as we have said earlier. It, it, nowadays, it's just Doesn't very difficult. Work as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And we, we've seen actually why it's why it's it may be more worth to just go for an item because we have seen the player in first place right there, um, to just go for a mask and he got a mask and he just rolled steamrolled over everyone basically. Yeah. Oh no. 
big mistake. All right, so Dong did get to take out uh, Rogometz, mm. so, Rogometzo, uh, but the very big wall bonk right there. Yeah. Yeah, like something that you also see quite often in wars is people going for the craziest TT lines and they often end up making more mistakes than they would do if they just went for like normal lines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dong like, because getting that was there was basically no reason for Dong to go that tight that he would need to like cut the corner entirely because I don't know, he just basically wasted a lot of positions because of that. There was no reason for him to go that tight. I think uh, Dong actually missed a boost there and got a good boost, so mm. he might be kind of cutting it close on reserves here. I didn't see if he got a double bounce. Looks like he's going safe now, maybe. Yeah, he's gonna get hit back around now if he overtakes him. Uh, oh no, okay. Car you would think so, but yeah. apparently not. Yeah. Okay, Caronta actually misses him. It's a mistake on Caronta's part, probably. And is Dong gonna be able to. No, wait. Yeah, no. Okay. A risky overtake. Teammates. Yeah. Okay, so going into lap four, you do see uh, the Spaniards out to uh, 1 2. A nice bomb. Like, he took Rogometsu's shield away. If he hadn't done that, Rogometsu would have probably hit him with his own shield. Yeah. But good call right there. Again, we see Dong holding onto that just up missile. He even ignored that one crate. Like, he went through it, but he held on onto that missile. The player in first place, by the way, is Lachazu. And the player in second is. Guillermo. Oh yeah, yes. We could uh, be looking at the uh, last standings. Mm. Fair. All right, Dong hits a red beaker. Wow! Uh, right wow! In the courtyard. Nice map awareness. Nice Corrupted, map awareness yeah. from Dong. He used that shield as soon as he saw Rogometsu approaching. Then again, Dong hitting that beaker is also kind of like a TT uh, mistake, I guess, because he just went for like super tight lines. And you have to be aware on Cortex Castle, pretty much every corner is blind. If you decide to go tight, you can prepare yourself to hitting every single item that's in the path there, because people like to place items tight. And also, Dong got comboed really, really badly <laughs> here. It was a really good play, a team play by the Spaniards here to just combo Dong until he wasn't able to move anymore. I did not get the screenshot, god damn it. If only... Alright, give me a sec. Yeah, we've seen kind of the same mistakes as in the as in, as in the race on Polar Pass. We've seen especially Dong, who usually does the front runner job. He's been hitting a lot of unnecessary back spam, and he has dropped positions because of that. And I think he he should really focus on on going a bit more wide, especially uh, at least on corners where he knows uh, like okay, those corners are blind, and people like to put items tight, which is always the case on Cortex Castle, basically. All right, there you go. Yeah, but so far we are seeing really nice plays from uh, Team Spain. Like, they definitely stepped up their game. Yeah, Spain kind of popping off at the moment. Okay, so track three going to be Engine Labs. This one might be a little bit different though. I think uh, Engine Labs tends to be a little bit more of a stable track in comparison to the other two that we've seen so far. Mm -hmm. So we might see a little bit of a change up here. Mm -hmm. Engine Labs is definitely a track that's a lot less explosive, I guess, if you want to call it that. Mm -hmm. Um. I got most on those blue fire tracks. If you lose blue fire once, then you can see yourself in for a combo train. Um, tracks like Thunderstruck, for example, have this issue on on a, 
a greater scale because the, the fastest blue fire thunderstruck is so fast and if you lose the fastest blue fire once you're gonna get comboed by pretty much everyone who's passing you and this is different than engine labs where on engine labs the blue fire is rather slow and if you lose blue fire you're only gonna lose four seconds at most no matter where you lose blue fire so even if you lose blue fire on engine labs it's not really that big of a deal um you can still be a couple seconds ahead of everyone and you don't really use lose much positions generally if you drop blue fire on engine labs so this race might be decided for the most part a little bit earlier because positions on engine labs tend to be rather stale for the most part so it's gonna be interesting to see um, what kind of strategy team Spain is going for here because the start is very important oh donkey just missing those Wumpa crate that might cost him the start and also missing the item crate here that's that's dangerous and also not not getting Wumpas either and he is gonna lose blue fire now yeah and hits the wall anyway mm. so basically Don didn't get a barely got an item and didn't get any of the Wumpas that yeah grab. yeah and, and and also he doesn't have the fast blue fire now he has the slower blue fire from the blue fire tunnel and that's I mean he's still third because I guess his teammates really protected him in that case so I guess props to them but that's not how you want the race to start they do have the two through four at the moment at the very yep. least so yep. that's definitely nice for them at the moment uh, it's winning not positions. a huge gap between one and two either never mind uh, that was Trying to extend the gap a little bit. I guess that good was Lachazu with a back bomb right there. Yeah, it was a really good back bomb if that was one, which I, I guess it was because we saw the explosion. Yeah. So yeah, Dong is again going for very uh, like TT lines basically, and if if he gets hit by another back spam item, like. I don't know. I, I guess he should choose the, the shield up here to get like a blue shield, which would make it easier to go for TT lines. Yeah. But then again, he makes himself prone to being backspammed. He's also, just trying to catch up to him there. Um, good zigzagging from Rugomets today. I admire the effort because he tried to zigzag to get a TNT off. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to make it and instead got hit but at least he managed to take qwerty out and qwerty is now on last place a bit behind rugomets too so so we do see first she first place has a blue shield as yep. well um and dong now has obviously a double blue shield yeah dong's not gonna have to worry about getting back spam yep mm -hmm. and even if there is a power item that comes he'll have a, a another piece of insurance and you do see that he is catching up to first place yeah. here yeah he is taking really really good lines and he's catching up to the house really fast and as soon as he's gonna be able to get close enough to him you know, however be able to however take him down probably. if Lahazu has a bomb in his storage Oh, Lahazu had They one. both had double wow. shields. <laughs> wow. Okay, now it depends on the item roll. And Don Wait, gets a shield. Yep. <laughs> nice, nice, Dog nice. Dog actually rolls a third shield in a row. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. Pretty great. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you can't combat that. That's nuts. Very nice time reaction, too. Yeah, the, that triple shield combo is. Wow. So now we're on lap five. We do see Dong and then uh, his teammate, uh, one of his teammates behind Quirty. him. Quirty is that. Quirty? Yeah, yep, Quirty. that's Quirty. So they got the one, two. So like I was saying, we did, this one might be a flip in comparison to the, the yep. rest of the races we've seen yeah, so far. They'd, oh, we see an orb coming on the minimap. That might be able to change some things around because I think that orb was fired by... No, it's not going to change anything. Because uh, third place got hit anyways. Well, unless it changes the back placements. Yeah, I mean, First, yeah, it changes changing. the back placement. It, it allows Awesome to make some points here. And they almost got a top three, so I guess there's that. Your op definitely was useful to some degree. Okay, Caronta is glitched, but he got fifth. Um, yeah, okay, scores. Got it, give me a sec. Mm.
ten, eight, five, and three. That is twenty-four points for Latin America. Yep. And yep. And fifteen points for Spain. So that reduces the point difference by nine points. <laughs> by nine points. So that's yep. eleven now. Yeah. So basically, that nullified the first race. Yep. We could see a, com a comeback from yeah. Latin America. Definitely shaping out to be a, a close match at the very moment. Okay, here we have the points. Alright, cool. Yeah, Spain is still leading, but uh, the, the gap was definitely closed a little bit. Alright, so next one up is clockwork. How do y'all feel about the, the clockwork pick? We haven't really seen that much, mm. have we? Yeah, clockwork is not really the most common pick in general, but it, then again, <clears throat> on this track it really just comes down to who's in the first two positions, because um, clockwork, due to the geometry and the layout, has some very sm some very narrow paths, and if, if your team, for example, has top two, and you do combo backspam, you can completely block those paths. Like, but you, you can't go between the cog and the wall if there's two nitros there. And if your right. team has top two, you can do some really effective combo backspam on this track, which is also why many people don't really like Clockwork Wumper, because those narrow, spa uh, those narrow spots are very powerful. Like, even, even if you are only one player and you have a two-star bomb, there's basically no place that the bomb doesn't cover. So if if you back bomb someone on those narrow paths, you are gonna hit someone. And yeah, yeah. If you <clears throat> if you can do some really good item plays, then this is a really good track because those narrow paths and also just general there, there's many blind corners and, and stuff and there's just a lot of things you can do with like back spam. So yeah. yeah. Combined with the fact that Clockwork is at least a, a relatively technical track. Yeah, yeah, it's a difficult track for sure. And it's also a blue fire track with only one STP, so it basically has everything. Yep. Yeah, it's kind of the perfect storm of unforgiving track. You see Dong falling <coughs> back to start, getting yep, to yeah. watch the chaos unfold, mm -hmm. creeping up to the top three, Yeah. who are the Spaniards. Now he's taking I guess... people down slowly. I guess a triple rocket, triple missile right at the start is a pretty good item roll, but he has to remember that uh, the missile is not particularly fast. <laughs> I uh, did, did I? Wow. Nice. That was uh, <clears throat> well played. Yeah. Yeah, hitting that trap is something that basically everyone does, so I'm surprised that Rogo Metsu wasn't even aware that Dong would do that. Like you, you never. I, it wasn't even Dong that hit it. I'm pretty sure it was Rogametsk that hit it. <laughs> really? Okay, it was Dong on his screen. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, okay, okay. But then again, I guess like you, you should you should never drive over that back. To... Wow, that bomb almost oh. hit. <laughs> uh, almost That's nuts. Yeah, there went the, <clears throat> the trap door again. Yeah, it's very rare to ever see people yeah. drive over the trap door because it just always wow, so that snipe. Oh, that snipe! Oh, that was a really good snipe. Narrowly dodges the nitro. Oh man! Unfortunately, oh, wait, oh, loses fire and gets a nitro in the face. That's very unfortunate for Dong. Like he 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 made a really good effort to take that blue shield away from. Uh, Caronta, but unfortunately wasn't able to make it. So Dong at least does have infinite reserves now, so that's nice. Yeah. On Clockwork Wumpa, no, it really is more. because because there's some spots on Clockwork Wumpa where you just don't want to drift and yeah. But then again, yeah. Yeah, I guess will he be able to keep it? Really, that's the, yeah, that's the main question. Yeah. He's got to make it through the pack if he even wants yeah. to move forward. That last corner there is also a popular spot, like people like to place items tight after that. 
He's gonna take out Guillermo. Nice. Also takes out Coronte. Nice. Oh, nice, nice. Nice line adjustment right there. That's very That's important. Nice back up. Currently, we do see. Okay, do, I think fourth. Oh, just got was, with the back yeah, bomb. Yeah, that was a nice back that bomb by, by Rogometsu right there. It was a juiced up bomb. Those those juiced up bombs have a an insane range. Like people underestimate it always. And clock and orb. Oh, what? Oh. <laughs> and Rogometsu has a shield for both. What the Don't fuck? Just gonna jump off to get rid of the clock effect. Yeah, but then again, he still has the red beaker effect, so he has to watch out. Now we are finally seeing the power items coming into play here. Yeah, for sure. Good. So do you see either QWERTY or I believe that's uh, Bang out in front? Like, uh, yeah, Bang is the other black star. Yeah, spider. yeah, it's Bang or QWERTY. And there's another orb coming which might be able to take Dong out. He now can take the shot. Cut. Or he shouldn't too. And that might be Lachazu's call to actually catch back up to Dong. If Lachazu has a mask here, then he can still easily get Dong. I don't think he can reasonably catch up to him. Oh yeah, he can. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, there it goes. Just yeah. Barely doesn't even finish actually. The All right. Mm. Result. Okay. Yeah, I'm not surprised to see basically nobody finishing hmm. on this race. I feel yeah. like that's a common thing on Clockwork. Yeah, in general, on blue fire tracks, that's that's a thing that you'll see pretty often. Yeah, on I always feel like I see that the most on like Oxide Station. You like see two, three people finish at most. And the then most else is just DNF'd. The most common is pretty much Tiny Temple. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, Latin America won that race, but only by three points, so Spain is still in the lead. And it's actually pretty cool, since this is also the first time Spain has ever had a lead on anyone, I think. Because Spain has lost all matches so far, and they are finally ahead of someone, like they are in the lead, and they've been... Uh, they've been so for the entirety of that match so far, and it's really cool to also see Spain really um, make some points there. And we are on halftime, and it seems as though they're probably not going to switch hosts. <coughs> we think that uh, they were having host issues anyways, so it yeah. makes sense that they're not going to switch. Remember that they have five minutes to think. Yep, of. yep, they yeah. have five minutes to do so. My geographically challenged brain said that in the in my brain, it, I was like, "Oh yeah, they're like nearby each other, anyways." The <laughs> and then I realized that I'm an idiot, and no, they're not. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, we might see a bit of a break time, so it's time for some banger music. Oh no, they are going at it right there. What the fuck? Okay, I guess I guess no break. They are just going at it straight, which is pretty cool, I guess. No soups, even though Killer was available for Latin America. So yep. Let's see. Yeah, it's shaping up to still be a relatively close match here. Mm. But then again, this is also what we want to see. Yeah. Because we've seen some one-sided beatdowns of Spain and they were not that pretty. This match will, or this race will, race will be interesting anyways. We have, uh, you know, Thunderstruck coming yeah, up. Yeah, Talked yeah. about uh, that being a relatively explosive track yeah. in terms of uh, action-packedness. 
Thunderstruck is one of those crazy tracks where usually there's one person who manages to escape and that manages to secure the win. There's also usually one or two people who are like in the back and then there's the mid pack and those positions are basically shuffling around the entire time because it really just depends on who has fire <laughs> and who doesn't. So um, yeah, you, you always see on Thunderstruck there's things changing very quickly, especially if power items are at play. Like a clock is pretty much the most destructive item on those those kind of tracks. Mm. Yeah, it also depends on who makes uh, the big shortcut, right? Yeah, yeah, that as well. Like, um, people, people like to go for Timber Shortcut and fail it. And even they they especially even like to do it when there's not even a need to go for yeah, it. There's no need for doing that, and they yeah. <laughs> now this is another strong track for Dong as yeah. well. Yeah. Mm. I guess they really picked the tracks based on where Dong would be able to front run. But then again, we've also seen strong front running from his teammates. So oh, this is also Dong. Spain's pick, anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice squish, La long lasting squish effect. Also, good mask usage because if he can, if Don can hit people after the blue fire pad here, then that's. Oh, nice, he managed Ooh, to get Karonda. Just at the end yeah. of the mask animation. A very, right? a very important hit because that will put Karonda in a very bad position right at the end of the pack. And he will have a hard time to make up that time loss because losing blue fire right after the blue fire pad is like. A 10 second time loss at least, coupled yeah. with falling down and stuff, it's like at least for 15 seconds. I'm surprised that Dong used his blue sh uh, his green shield already. Oh, <laughs> not good. That's not what he wanted to. Yeah, he tried to ride on the collision, which is basically a time trial strat. So uh, again, we see Dong go for time trial strats and failing. He could have gone perfectly wide. Nobody would have ca ca caught up to him because the people were like a lot behind him, and he still went for it and he failed. And now he's going to get comboed. Yeah, and it's not like he needed to pass anybody up. Anyways, yeah, because his teammate is the one in first. Yeah. I mean, unless it was just a genuine mistake, and yeah. not that he was just trying to go for time trial lines. Which, you know, is possible that the uh, jump is kind of jank. I mean, it really is. Like, the physics on this track are very janky in general. But, but yep. then again, you, you should kind of know it. Like, if you're an experienced player like Dong, you should know about that. True. The Rigamitsu losing fire at the end mm, there. And he might... Oh, he falls down before he... Oh, he still gets comboed. Wow. Yeah. Oof. There it goes. We actually now see... So that see... means he's not even going to get the slower blue fire yeah. because of that. We see the top four from Team Latin America now. Yeah, still a little bit of shuffling, but uh, definitely looking good for Latin America at the moment. Yep. You also see Dong holding on to his shield despite having a super engine in storage. Super engine on this track is generally very useful because Thunderstruck is one of the most technical tracks in the game and having infinite reserves on this track is really really useful for a lot of things but um, yeah. he still keeps onto his blue shield simply because having a blue shield means you are safe from anything so even if the Spaniards get the clock on orb he can basically protect himself and and I think that's the right decision like he just, just should just play it safe instead of going for reserves and stuff I'm not sure if I agree because the person right behind him is actually, you know, on the other team. Yeah, it but but they have but for him to get that and then, you know, backspam. Yeah, but then again, we've seen Dong getting hit just now, but uh, yeah, I think he made the right call by sticking on that shield because it protected him at the end. He would have lost one position if he had gotten rid of that shield earlier. That's fair. Then again, you watch top three from uh, Team Latin America. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Yeah, and that means Team Latin America is now in the lead in terms of points. Yeah, they got disappeared. 
So now yep. Latin America is living this. So, well, we see all those fire, uh, blue fire trucks. They were pretty even, right? Mm. Now, yeah. It's tar. It's the term for sacred fire trucks. Yeah, now I'll find you the sacred fire tracks. I know a lot of people <laughs> who prefer sacred fire tracks over blue fire tracks simply because of how blue fire is designed. But then again, I personally don't have any strong preference. It really just depends on the track. For example, Quada Carnival and Ender Labs are good blue fire tracks, whereas there's also bad sacred fire tracks. I don't know. Yeah, it really just depends on a lot of factors, I guess. That uh, that last race was actually we haven't really seen much impact from uh, from Awesome mm. at the for the most part, and yeah. he was able to front run basically that entire race yeah. right there. So good first place finish for him, definitely changing up uh, his points at least a little bit. And uh, Justin said something that is actually kind of a good point or a good mm. discussion. Uh, Dong is such a good front runner in general because he's mm. so good at time trials, but at the same time he's such a good item user that it's definitely difficult to try to figure out the balance between, you know, do you yep. want him to try to front run just because you know he's able to to have consistently mm. really fast times, but he's also invaluable when it comes to taking people down and holding people back. Yeah, that's a similar issue that I have as well, for example, and even other players um, have that issue as well, like simply Jordi, for example, as well. It, it just comes down, I think what's most important is, <clears throat> it's not it's not the question of what is Dong able to do, but the question is what are his teammates able to do. If he's on a team where two where there are already two other front runners, then he can just sit back and go for items. But he's in a team where he's needed as a front runner, then he should just do that. Yeah, definitely. That's kind of how I feel as well. At least in this current situation, he's supposed to be probably the front runner. Oh, he because... tries to go oh, wide here, but unfortunately gets bombed nonetheless. Um, and I think that might have been by his own teammate, even. <clears throat> Get another beaker snipe? Uh, not quite. Also nice going for the Wumpa there, because those Wumpa will pro prove to be helpful at some point, because he can get the other Wumpa box um, right above those stairs, and um, yeah, then he has basically juiced, but he decides to not go for it, it's kind of a shame. But he takes those He's gonna at go least. for these ones at the very least. Yeah, being being juiced up is really important. I think I still see a lot of people who basically ignore every Wumpa box on the track simply because Wumpa boxes usually aren't placed on time trial lines. And right. and I think nowadays when you play wars, you really should always be juiced up simply because most items are so much better when they are juiced up, and you should always have ten Wumpas in storage. Oh, and Dong using that bomb way too early. He should have waited a little bit. So right now we do see uh, Rogometso is yeah. uh, out in front at the very least. Ooh. And I think Rogometso is doing that exact mistake that I just mentioned. He's running around with three Wombas. He's finally grabbing that box. But for example, we've seen him have a green shield and he was in lap two already. So why didn't he have 10 Wumpa already? Considering that he and, and his teammate, they are so far ahead. Why does he not have 10 Wumpa? He could have he could have pulled onto a blue shield now. But he didn't have 10 Wumpa and wasted his green shield basically. And I think that's a mistake. Because if they if Team Latin America gets a power item now, they can take him out. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean the And there's the Dob, there's Dob. Yeah, Dob, there Dob is coming. And that's gonna hit Rogometsu now because he has nothing to protect himself. Yeah, and the Wumpa boxes aren't even really that out of the way on this yeah, track. I mean, yeah. there's some where it, they are, but there's like, what, like seven or eight Wumpa boxes yeah. on this track? Yeah, there's many and Wumpa boxes on this track. Three of them right there that are on a line that you would normally take. 
and the number of Wumpa crates is actually why a lot of people don't hate this track. Like, of course, there's only one spot where you can get Sacred Fire back, but there's also so many Wumpa boxes on the track. You can get Sacred Fire in lap one already, uh, way before the way yeah. before the first turbo pad. And the chance for that to happen is not even that slim. You just need a turbo engine, and you can basically always get Sacred Fire back, which is also why people generally like to play this track. It's it's not as bad ba badly balanced, even though there's only uh, one turbo pad. Basically, you can still get sacred fire a lot of times. Yeah, that's fair. Another. Orb. Yeah. And this time we do see <clears throat> Rogue is uh, oh, up in front. Still, I I th I think waiting there is a mistake, especially <laughs> since you didn't hit him. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> Yeah, yeah, especially and then he lost the fire immediately. I mean, actually. I mean, oh, yeah. Dong Dong should have seen that this orb is unjust. Like it was targeting first place Rogo Metsto from the beginning on. Why did Dong wait before the turbo pad? That makes no sense. And now Dong has no fire, and the player behind him is going to catch up. And oh. and I think uh, this might be a top three for. Yeah, he's coming with a blue shield even, so if, if Dong can't defend himself here, then he's gonna get overtaken. There's no reason that he doesn't... Oh, yeah, okay, he tried. He's, he's okay, got triple nice. bombs, so... <laughs> That's a nice play, but he put himself at, at an unnecessary risk, in my opinion, of being overtaken. Yeah, I can definitely understand. I mean, obviously, because, uh, you know, he kind of lost the fire immediately yeah. afterwards as well. There was no net gain there. Yeah, yeah. I think waiting for that orb was definitely a bad call on on his side because he should have seen that this orb is unjust and he lost a lot of time because of that. I mean, it was lucky uh, for him that he had the, the triple juice up bomb and storage was just, just stupidly powerful. But um, yeah, th this could have gone badly. So it's it's something that right there uh, he should really keep that in mind for next time yeah yeah so now we get the top two from spain and uh then we go two three four for latin america fifth with yeah. uh, spain and then seventh with spain as well so the six, positions eight. in general were really good for team spain here and they are yeah. now they they basically bounced back and they are now back in the lead which is pretty cool we we are seeing some dynamic races here yep yeah, this is definitely still extremely close. Only two, only two maps. Two yeah, only two maps left with six point difference. Yeah, that's basically nothing. Yeah, this could. Sh I would. I was gonna say this could shape up to be the closest match so far, but we did have. Mm. We have had multiple matches that were just a two point difference. Mm. Imagine if we get a draw, though. Wow. Okay, a draw. I mean, a draw is uh, theoretically possible. Like, if, if yeah, team it is on the table. Draw. Yeah. If if Team Latin America gets top two in each race and bottom two, then we might see a draw. Why is Roost Tubes not the last map? Because nobody picks Roost Tubes as the last map except Poland. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, Any it's, jungle boogies right now? That's really it. Because it's not a competitive track. You should be happy enough that there's engine labs. Yeah. <laughs> I think Peru chose jungle boogie in the second match. Oh, hell I mean, yeah. France, I think. Yeah, <laughs> I'm kind of pissed off that so many people just banned Koala Carnival. We we need more Koala Carnival. <laughs> I mean, Germany Germany picked Koala Carnival and Coco Park against Very Italy, good. and and we won both races. <laughs> good. <laughs> God bless. All right. So, getting ready to get started on Android Alley. <clears throat> we are seeing some cycle manipulation. Un yeah. <laughs> un unintentional, though. Rain is going right now. Isn't it? No, it's not. Okay. Ooh, nice bombo. Super engine. <laughs> well, Donguitos can't use his super engine because he's made there. 
right there. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, he should he should use it really and then just get like those reserves, especially if he gets some. I mean, yeah, he got a bomb, but but still. Also, I'm, I'm I'm not really I'm not really sure how to feel about Dong not being juiced up because that triple juice bomb could have been very powerful, but he ignored both Wumpa boxes and didn't go for any. And sniping people with an unjuiced bomb is just a lot harder. What? That Nitro Wait. hit four oh, that's people. A nitro? Holy shit! That Nitro hit four people. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, that's insane. That's a I think that's the first time I've ever seen that happen. That Nitro took out everyone! This Zangitas goes blind. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. That's. Um... I thought that was a clock. <laughs> like, honestly, I just yeah, assumed I it was a clock. Oh, dong, no. Oh, it's, it's... wait, we are seeing so many explosions here. What is even going on? <laughs> um... Okay. Uh, I, 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 I'm not sure what happened, but. I, I guess I guess Nitros are the MVP of this race. <laughs> That's I I'm I'm still just all shook by that that Nitro. What the hell? <laughs> How? Okay, I have to rewatch that clip later because yeah, that, somebody that was needs insane. to clip that if they didn't. Because <laughs> seriously. <laughs> Right now. Oh, Dong even tries to go for the speed ghost, which is very difficult on this track, and I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> Places the beaker tight on the sweeper. It looks like that yeah. might have nailed one of them, actually. Mm -hmm. So we got a top three right now. Yeah. For Latin America. Top three Latin American Dong out in front with the blue shield. It's Definitely basically it's basically Rogometsto's call to make something happen. I mean, I guess he can take out the player ahead of him, which should be awesome, I think. Yeah, that's awesome. Yep. Yes. Um, yeah, he can take Ooh. out that player, but uh, oh, he gets Fire. taken out and loses Fire. sacred fire. Oh, he gets team killed even. He was team oh, kill. Yeah. That's that's not what yeah. you want to happen. <laughs> I mean, yeah. At this point, the top three is basically gone. Like we see, we see Dong in in, in the front with the blue shield, so he is he basically won that race. There's also either Qwerty or Bangang uh, right behind him, and they are so far ahead of like the rest of the pack. And I think it's gonna be really, really difficult for Team Spain to catch back up. Yeah, at most, I think we see a change of. Uh, three and four. Yeah. If you really can <clears throat> see a, a change happening, but yeah. one and two are just gone right now. I mean, a clock or a well timed orb could still change, as you said, third and fourth place, but that's really as far as it goes. Like, second place would have to mess up badly. Yeah. Like, getting nailed by the train. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the only thing I can see here. And uh, we don't know who it is that's actually at the very back of the pack, but uh, whoever that is has been struggling a ton. Um, I, I, that's if you watch their Guillermo. icon, you've been able you've been able to see them. Uh, their icon's been flashing yeah. you know, from the back of the pack, so mm. it means that they're getting hit by back spam stuff while already mm. being eighth place, which is definitely. And maybe it, also... I think that might have an effect on. Uh, your item rules to an extent, but yeah. uh, I don't know if it actually does. I mean, having someone in 8th from your own team is kind of helpful sometimes because it prevents the enemy team from rolling as much pyro items. But that's really as far as it goes. It's like, right. you, you shouldn't do it intentionally. It's But if you have someone in 8th, you can prevent the, your, the enemy team from rolling as many power items, basically. It's, Mm. So that, that's really it. It's a top 3 and 5th place for Latin America. So that gives them a great advantage right now, right? Like... Yeah, they should be in the lead by a decent amount right now. I mean, Spain can win only with a top 4, I think? Top 3? No, yeah, top Spain. Three. I mean, Spain does still have the opportunity to win yeah. overall, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it is... Definitely currently in Latin America's favor. 
Yeah. We basically see Latin America with an 11 point lead. So basically, if Spain gets top 3, then they get exactly 11 points. So, <laughs> yeah. if this happens, it's gonna be a tie. But then again, um, the point difference is also not enough to really change anything. So, it doesn't really matter if Spain loses here because. Yeah, point difference, basically. Mm. But if Spain wins, Peru is out, I think, right? Um, I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no matter, like... the, unfortunately, even if they do win at this point, it doesn't matter. They're not going to be able to yeah. you know, qualify. Because, yeah, again, they, they needed to win by a... a decent amount to yeah be able to qualify. as we said in the beginning they would have needed to win by yeah. like 69 points at least and that's just very difficult like i don't think aside from spain was italy i don't think any other world cup match was ever that one-sided hmm so I'm checking right now because my country depends on this result. <laughs> so basically, Spain can drag us with them, <laughs> and, or they can choose to be good and lose in purpose. <laughs> uh, I mean, it depends. <laughs> All right, so Baron ruins though for the last track will be at least a little bit interesting. I don't really know how this track doesn't really play out too interestingly. Yeah, actually, it's a very stale track. It's a very stale track, that's for sure. Like, most things are decided right now at a start. Yeah. And Dong slows down only to get a super engine, so... <laughs> I guess... Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> Game... Be like that. He can take out Courant if it uh, outlines him, but unfortunately, it doesn't manage to. Shield snipe? Mm, ah. Probably go for it on the straightaway. Like yeah. His, his, his mates. Nice! Yeah, there it goes. I mean, he's, he's, oh, he's, he's sniped actually. his own team. <laughs> his own teammate. Wow. It was a good snipe, but unfortunately, it uh, hit the wrong person. Yeah, <laughs> and also gets back bombed. By Caronda right there, so good call. Also, nice zigzagging from Rugometsu right there to get a TNT off. Unfortunately, he isn't able to, but it's a good call at least. We don't see that from many players in general. Oh, Ooh, bang, disconnects. Oh, that could be fatal, actually. That's they're already into lap two. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Especially since this will make it harder for Dong's team now. Um, for Team Latin America to secure high positions. And if they are unlucky... Like, Awesome is not too far ahead of Lajazu. And if, if Spain manages to actually secure those higher positions, then we might see that top three. Lol, that... <laughs> missile. Nice oh missile. And it wasn't, it wasn't even used. <laughs> yeah, the ju the unjuiced missile can keep up with players just fine on Baron Ruins. The 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 sacred fire is not too fast on Baron Ruins. We do still see Latin America out in front for the first position and then also in third. So I. Think I think this is still looking like a win for Latin America, I believe. Um, do they have top well, two? There, there's wait, a black, no. there's a black Spyro. Yeah. Is that, that is that is that player last? Is is that an overlapping? Oh, yeah. That's pro. No, that's bang. Oh, that's yeah, a, yeah. oh, that's a, that's the CPU. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Oh, okay, so I think also got uh, boobies. So. 
Yeah, I think this is looking pretty good now. Oh, Dong unfortunately Ooh, Dong. hits the robot, but that's not really going to change anything. Because yep. they all also hit something. What the fuck? Yeah, that's that's a win for Team Latin America right now. Yeah. Yep. Securing first place means a win by 11 points. Not possible anymore. Nice, nice, nice. Well played, both, both teams. Yeah, well played. It was a tight war for, like, up until the last race, basically. Yeah. Definitely well played by Team Spain. I think that's the closest match that they've had so far. They fight till the end. Yep. That's very I mean, it's a very it's a commendable good. effort. Yeah, they definitely put up a really good fight. Yeah, throughout the whole war, for sure. <laughs> now Latin America just saved Peru. No, it's not Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the ending scores basically Latin America wins with. 14 points Okay So actually Supposedly we should be having our next match In about yep. 10 minutes Yep in about 10 minutes And that's gonna be Poland Versus Chile So I'm gonna grab a drink. I'm gonna mm -hmm. allow you guys to talk over the end results and yep. maybe get hyped up for the next match. So I will be right back. Yep. I'm gonna put on some banger music. Yeah. 14 point win. Not bad. Hmm. Hope Spain doesn't get demoralized with this. Yeah, I mean, I guess losing five matches in a row can be kind of demoralizing. But then again, it's also valuable experience. They got to play a lot of matches. They played many different teams. And I think they are definitely going to take out. Like, they are going to take on some experience from that tournament and I think it's gonna be a valuable experience for them. Yeah, they improve a lot actually in this setting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure.